Hey, ACC24, I'm Leslie, and I have here with us Dr. David Austin, who's the principal investigator of the PRO Act trial. Thanks, Dr. Austin, for being with us. It's a pleasure, Leslie. Thank you for having me. Dr. Austin, so as an interventional cardiologist and also writing grants um, for clinical trials, what were kind of your life memories that cemented these two paths for you, whether it be memories growing up or growing up as a cardiologist? Um, so it's a good question. And I think um, looking back, I've always had a keen interest in research more broadly, not necessarily even before I considered becoming a cardiologist. And um, I think the first time I really thought that research should be part of my career long term was when I was actually a medical student. Um, and I know it's also possible here in the US to take a year out to study or, or concentrate purely on research for a year. Right. And I think um, if people are interested in having research as part of their role in the medium and the long term, I think that would be something that uh, I would recommend from my kind of early career. Okay. So I spent a year working with a professor of public health um, when I was uh, an undergraduate. Uh, it was actually looking in the field of oncology, actually, rather than cardiology. Oh, wow. um, and then going forward, as I went into clinical training, a lot of the lessons that I learned through that dedicated period of research about study design, about principles of research, they stay with you really in the long term. Got it. That's actually interesting. Thanks for letting us know that um, it seems like you actually had a dedicated time where you just focused on research. Um, so for a lot of us um, who are interested maybe in the clinician investigator pathway, um, I know being a principal investigator and running clinical trials require such a different skill set than the ones that we routinely use as clinicians. So I, I, I can imagine you did a lot of extra things to kind of build those um, skill sets, kind of like what you mentioned, it seems like you did a public health, um, uh, kind of a public health studies, and that was really helpful for you. Um, what are other things, if you could kind of share with us, who might be interested in doing clinician investigator track? Um, so, that kind of set me up as an undergraduate and I think I did a further um, sort of dedicated period of study um, just prior to me starting as uh, in full-time cardiology training so the kind of more advanced level training so after I'd completed general medical training um, and again that was more in the field of interventional cardiology that I eventually went into clinically um, but I guess I've kind of not really stuck to that I've kind of like wanted to move around a little bit and um, I think I see the cardio-oncology field as, an, as a field where we can impact because uh, there's a need really for studies in this area. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. I find it very fascinating. That's really. right. And, um, <laughs> and I think whatever you study, whether it's in your, uh, whatever you want to do as a clinician scientist, and I think it may be easier to study in the area you're clinically practicing all of the time. Um, but uh, whatever it is, it needs to keep you interested and motivated because it's actually quite a long career once you get out there Correct. and start yes. working and you need to have something that continually drives you and continually interests you. And so the clinical trials really interest me and I work with a great team at home. Um, you know, it's, it's a team game. All right. That's the other thing. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it keeps us going and it's a sort of more of a long term focus. Often your patients you're dealing with there and then very immediate often in car cardiology sometimes emergencies yes. and it's a slightly different way to think about uh, medicine the practice of medicine is you know um, the sort of medium to long term uh, results of performing trials and, and that impact on the wider group of people right and um you actually reminded me i was still a teenager when my parents were doing or phd students and even back then i observed how mentorship was very well integrated into how they ended up um, finding success and ended up loving what they do so for you i'm curious who were kind of your mentors or like a moment in time where you realized oh i found the right mentor so yeah i mean i've had a few mentors really over the years um so I talked a little bit about my experience as an undergraduate. So um, uh, my public health professor is called Professor Elizabeth Russell. She's in her 80s now. Oh, wow. Um, and she was a really interesting uh, lady to work with and for. Um, really stretched my mind as a sort of, I think I must have been 19, 20 at the time. Mm 
Um, <laughs> and then uh, I subsequently worked with uh, Professor Jill Pell, who's a, again a public health epidemiology professor in Glasgow University, and uh, Professor Keith Aldroyd, who's an interventional cardiologist. So these are all people who've influenced me uh, academically. Um, and, uh, and now I, I work with my colleague, Professor Inoka Kua, who's a cardiac <laughs> surgeon. So, oh, you know, wow. uh, we have different perspectives and it's, it's interesting and, you know, he drives me on as well. And uh, so, yeah, uh, lots of different people over the years and they can feed into your own unique uh, <laughs> right. style. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing your life story and kind of your career development with us, Dr. Austin. Um, so thank you for giving us your time. And to watch more videos like this, please check out youtube.com forward slash fits on the go and follow us on X at fits on the go.